Hey, what's up everybody? Dor and Al Data here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Mark Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Easy for me to say. And uh, today we're going to talk about something that I think is really timely and important and frankly has perennial impact because something tells me I'm not the only one who struggles with procrastination. Something tells me there's a few more of you out there who could use some power in your arsenal to get you to take massive, powerful, intelligent, inspired action now. True or not true? And so today we're going to talk about a topic that I feel is going to kick this problem in the teeth once and for all if you apply these principles to your life and your business. And the topic is how to liberate yourself from procrastination purgatory and claim your power now. And it's interesting because even the topic of this has a perfect dovetailed opportunity for me to procrastinate on delivering this timely topic because when I was planning the design for a custom built super galactic off the chain awesome outdoor lounge area with my beautiful wife on the weekend, we're building this thing out. It's all concrete and custom and it's got curves and it's got, you know, custom design for this and that and that and the other. And of course, there's a ton of decisions on what we want to have done. And while we're kind of masterminding it, I bend over to pick up a stick to draw something out and I whack my forehead right on a two by, two by four. I kid you not. You may see a little bit of a welt on my forehead right here if you're watching this because I still have the welt from Sunday when I whacked my head with a two by four. So apparently I was using my head a little too much in that moment. And I wanted to procrastinate on this webinar or rather on this Facebook Live because I was like, man, I'm gonna look like a chump, like a schmuck with this big dot on my forehead. You know, it's gonna look weird. And so I was thinking, man, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna do this on Friday after the swelling goes down. And it was like, you know, it's kind of like the guy who has always wanted to write a book about how to overcome procrastination, but he hasn't gotten around to it, right? <laughs> it's like, there's always something in the way. So apparently he really needs to apply his own coaching. And I felt like I needed to apply my own coaching today just to deliver this topic because I wanted to procrastinate and not do it today because I wanted everything to just be right and just be perfect. I didn't want to have this scab on my freaking forehead and all this. But I was like, screw it, let's do it. That's what my wife's makeup is for. I'm just going to smear some some of this stuff on my forehead and, you know, that should be good enough. So if it doesn't look like it's altogether good makeup, hey, you can't blame me. I don't do this very often. I'm not very practiced at putting on makeup, just saying. But nonetheless, I think it really speaks to our proclivity as human beings to procrastinate, to have this desire to look for the perfect timing, Right. I want to do it when it's more convenient. I want to do it when I have more time. I want to do it when I have more energy. I want to do it when I have more knowledge. I want to do it when I've got more skill. I want to do it when I have more competence or confidence. I want to do it when all the stars align. I want to do it when I have more momentum. I want to do it when I have more money. I want to do it when it's easier. I want to do it. You get the idea, right? It's like there's never the perfect time. There's always something that's too hard, too difficult, too inconvenient. If you let it stop you, there'll always be something to stop you. So that's why champions always take intelligent, inspired action now. That's why champions strike while the iron is hot. That's why champions are on the move. They have a bias towards action. So let me ask you, what is it that you tend to procrastinate on? What is it that you tend to procrastinate on? Is it uh, doing your proactive prospecting activities? Is it reaching out to realtors? Is it doing some kind of uh, marketing activity? Is it booking appointments with uh, top producing agents? Ch chances are it's gonna be something that's outside of the comfort zone, right? Something that feels like a big risk and something that feels like it's pulling you out of your comfort zone into the unknown, into the fear of rejection or the fear of having a no or someone telling you no, the fear of what if I fail, what if I mess this up, right? There's that risk, but on the other side of that risk, there's reward and we can't have the reward without the risk. Those two come 
in tandem. Those two come hand in hand. You can't have reward without risk. So we tend to get ourselves stuck. I'll tell you one thing that often holds me back from taking action is that things that feel like a really big mammoth task, right? Something that feels like a really big and something I'm not really good at. So for me, it's like doing administrative stuff, minutia, you know, bean counting, uh, pushing paper. Or if I was to look at stuff around my house, it's like cleaning out my furnace room or cleaning out my, my garage, right? It just seems like such a mammoth task. It doesn't sound fun or, or sexy or exciting. It just seems like, man, gag reflex. Who wants to do that? It sounds like, you know, I'd rather do it manana, right? There's always another day, another time to do it. And in some cases, that's not a big deal because does it really make any difference to the quality of my life if I go and I organize my furnace room or my garage? Not really. It might look a little prettier. It might be a little more organized. It might be a little more convenient when I go looking for shit that I can't find because I don't have things organized properly. But in general day-to-day -day life, it's probably not going to change my life that much, whether I do that or I don't. But if you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net and you're procrastinate on, procrastinating on the single most profitable activity you could ever do in your business, which is proactive prospecting, now we got a problem, right? Because the very thing that's going to have you thrive if you procrastinate on it is going to have you struggle to survive and you're going to have skinny kids. That does not bode well, right? So there are certain tasks and activities and responsibilities and roles in our business as 100% commission uh, you know, sales professionals that can really hinder us and cause us a lot of undue stress and strife if we let it. So that's why I decided we need to talk about this, how to kick procrastination in the teeth once and for all and own your power to take proactive, preemptive action in the most potently profitable activities you can ever do, namely prospecting, right? So the first step in this process that is the first step to kicking procrastination in the teeth once and for all is know what you want. I mean, procrastination doesn't really matter if it's not putting the brakes on something that's really important to you. Like if you're not trying to get the 747 off the runway, putting the brakes on doesn't really matter, right? If you're procrastinating on going full throttle or you're procrastinating on getting the brakes released, well, who cares if you're perfectly content just sitting on the tarmac going nowhere? It's, it doesn't really matter. It's like you're cool either way. But as soon as you have a dream and you realize that dream is three, you know, a thousand feet above the tarmac and you need to get off the tarmac, you need to get velocity, sufficient velo velocity to overcome the law of gravity and to enact the law of lift to get off the tarmac and into the jet stream and into your dream. Then you realize, okay, having a procrastination proclivity towards pressing, getting the brakes released and going full throttle probably is not going to serve me to that outcome of getting into the jet stream and into the dream, getting off this freaking tarmac. So outcome is the first step. We need to know where we're going. We need to know what we want to create. Otherwise, procrastination really doesn't matter. Procrastination only matters if there's something we really want to create that procrastination is putting the brakes on and hindering our ability to manifest. So what is it that you want that procrastination is flying in the face of allowing you to manifest? Is it making freedom money, liberate your spouse money, do what you want when you want with whom you want anytime you want money? Is it like a lady I talked to earlier today, she wants a 59 Stang, all refurbished, black with green, emerald green interior. Like she has a vision for what she wants to create. And so she has that image of the dream she wants to realize. For some people, it might be stroking big checks to worthy causes. For other people, like in my brokerage, we want to liberate 500 kids a year from the dark pit of slavery uh, because there are kids who are being enslaved every single day, millions of them, due to the inconscionable uh, you know, and frankly, just unbelievable evil of human trafficking. So our vision with my brokerage is to liberate over 500 kids a year. And to be able to do that while helping our loan officers live their best life uh, with my mortgage comp coaching company, 
We want to be the number one mortgage marketing coaching company on planet Earth, liberating more mortgage professionals out of the suck of doing it the hard way and having them soar into their best life. So there's certain visions that I have and my, my team has that we want to manifest. What is it for you? What is it that you have a white hot fire burning desire for? What is it that gets you bouncing out of bed in the morning and gets you staying up late at night to accomplish? If you don't have that white hot fire burning desire, that's where you need to start because that is the fuel in your rocket. You got to know what you want. And then there might be something that flies in the face of that, like call reluctance, like doing the proactive prospecting activities, like working on your business instead of just in your business, like, you know, investing in systems and policy and procedure and protocol and proactive lead generation and all these different things that need to be put in place in order to get to the production level where you're actually making the kind of money with enough zeros and commas in your bank account to make your dream a reality, right? It's all driven on prospecting. You're not in the mortgage business. You're in the marketing business. That is the business you're in. But to make your dream a reality, we need to be able to up-level your marketing. So you need to know what you want as the very first step. How much do you want to earn? How many hours a week do you want to work? What kind of home do you want to live in? In what location? What kind of vehicle do you want to have? What kind of you know, meaningful contributions do you want to make to uh, worthy causes? What kind of big checks do you want to be stroking to worthy causes? Who do you want to liberate? Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to uh, make a difference for? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Those are the sorts of things you want to really get crystallized because clarity is power. The problem with most people is not that they shoot too high and miss, it's that they shoot too low and hit, you know, because they're like, ah, oh, I want to be realistic. Screw freaking being realistic. Being real realistic is great. If you want to live in, I can't afford a prison, but if you want to make freedom money, being realistic is a great way to be mediocre and fall way short of your potential. So screw being realistic and reasonable. It's time to be unrealistic and unreasonable and realize God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. You were made by greatness and for greatness. And if it's in your heart, you want to accomplish it and it feels scary and exciting at the same time, that means you're playing a big enough game, that means you're on the right track. If you're not scared and excited at the same time about your dream, you're not playing a big enough game. Just saying. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up way too much space. Just saying. So know what you want and have a big, hairy, audacious goal. BHOG, a big, hairy, audacious goal that calls out the best in you, that's so big, that's so audacious, it requires you and God to make it happen. You need a God-sized God -size dream that calls out the best in you, that has you step into your God calling, your God potential, and to really show up and shine and to be the best version of yourself. So that's the first step. To overcome procrastination, you need a white, hot fire, a burning desire for a dream that is so big, it scares you and excites you at the same time. Have you got that dream? Have you got that vision? If you haven't, that's why you're procrastinating because it's like a Ferrari with no fuel. You might have a ton of potential, just like a Ferrari looks beautiful, looks amazing, looks sexy, has a ton of potential. You go, you know, zero to 60 in like four or five seconds or whatever it is. But if it doesn't have fuel in the tank, it might look pretty, but it ain't going to take you anywhere. Same thing with you. You got talent, you got ability, you got potential. But if you don't have a white hot fire burning desire, if you don't have, vi have a vision, you're just meandering meandering in the wilderness without a plan, without a GPS. You're like a Ferrari. You look pretty, but you're not going to go anywhere until you've got that fire in your belly to make something of yourself and your, of your life. Now you're ready to go out there and conquer. Now you're ready to kick procrastination in the teeth. Does that make sense, guys? That is the win in your sales, is knowing what you want and knowing why you want it. And getting emotionally involved with that vision for your life and your future and your business. So that's the first step. The second step now is feel the victory in advance. This is a step most people miss. Most people want it, they get caught up in the how. How am I going to make it work? How am I going to achieve it? How am I going to get the realtor partners? How am I going to get the leads? How am I going to get the closings? How am I going to get the prospects? And so you get up caught up in the quagmire of the how 
And because you're so overwhelmed and you don't have the answers, then you get stuck in the how. And what's the feeling? The feeling is overwhelmed. The feeling is confusion. The feeling is uncertainty. The feeling is frustration. The fear is anxiety. The feeling is fear or anxiety and worry because you're all caught up in the fear around being inadequate, not having enough knowledge or enough skill, enough competence or competence, confidence that is required to get to your dream. And so then we have imposter syndrome, right? You know, I'm not enough. I don't have enough knowledge, skill, wisdom, experience, know-how, money, whatever it is, right? And so that's how we get imposter syndrome and 1% doubt, you're out, right? And all of a sudden now you go get sucked down the rabbit hole of fear, worry, anxiety, and that energy will never create your dream. You know it and I know it. If you're in fear, worry, anxiety, overwhelm, that's never going to get you to making freedom money, champion money, hero money. You know it and I know it. So that's where the secret is to not worry about the how. Know that when the why is big enough, the how will be revealed. You don't need to know the how yet. All you need to know is the what and the why. The what is your dream. The why is why is it so important to you? And then you want to feel it as if you already have it. That's where the the, the why becomes embodied in a vibrational frequency in your body. It's an emotion. It's, an, uh, it's energy in motion. Emotion is energy in motion. So when you imagine yourself, and this is an awesome trick, an awesome hack you can use when you feel the proclivity towards procrastination, just close your eyes, put your hand in your heart, and just ask yourself, when I'm living my dream, how do I feel now that my dream is realized now? How do I feel now that my dream is realized? And get yourself connected to it. How great do I feel now that my dream is realized? Now that I'm living my dream. And when you get connected to that feeling, notice the feeling of that. It's energy, right? It's excitement. It's passion. It's purpose. It's joy. It's gratitude. It's victory. It's accomplishment. It's the thrill of accomplishment. So there's a sweet glory in getting connected to that feeling. That's the vibration of victory. So you got to get your body animated with the vibration of victory. When you feel that feeling, what happens to your proclivity to overwhelm or your proclivity to procrastination? It evaporates. Does it not? It evaporates. Why? Because the vibration of procrastination is contraction. It's fear. It's a putting the brakes on vibration. You're in contraction mode. You're turtling. You're withdrawing. You're holding back. You're pulling punches. You're half-stepping. That's what procrastination is. But when you feel your dream as if you already have it, all of a sudden now you're in expansion energy. You're no longer in contraction energy. You're expanding into it. You're feeling the elation of it as if you already have it. That's an expansive, elevated vibration, emotion. When you're living in that emotion, what happens to your motivation? It goes up. Why? Because emotion is energy in motion. So those higher level emotions increase the level of your motion. When you have higher level emotion, you have energy in motion at a higher level, which means you have more motivation. So that's why when you feel good, you tend to do good. When you feel inspired, you take inspired action. When you feel empowered, you take powerful action. It's all sourced from within, not from without. It starts with the feeling. Now, you might be saying, but Doran, that's so woo-woo. It's so impractical. I mean, I got bills to pay. I got shit I need to do. I can't be doing all this woo-woo stuff. I need to focus on getting things done. I need to know the how. I need to know the strategy. I need to know the tactics. How is all this woo-woo shit going to work if I don't know actually what I need to do? Well, I can appreciate that. And what's the likelihood you're ever going to lock in on the right tactics and the right strategy if you continue to remain in contraction mode in fear and worry and anxiety and procrastination? Slim to none. As Dr. Phil would say, how's that been working for you so far? Right? Chances are not very well. Why? Because when you're in fear mode and when you're in contraction procrastination mode, it's like flipping the power switch off. All of a sudden, all systems power down. And now you don't have the resourcefulness muscle you need. 
You don't have the decisiveness muscle you need. You don't have the commitment resourcefulness that you need to actually step into the superpower version of yourself that allows you to tap into the infinite potential that you're able to draw from. It's like a divine download you draw from when you're in that vibration of victory. So all of a sudden you're attuned to intuition, divine discernment, divine insight, divine wisdom. All of a sudden you get these divine downloads. Where do they come from? I don't know. It's just the divine insight. The supernatural animates the natural. And all of a sudden you get this intuitive knowing that you wouldn't have had otherwise because you're abiding in peace. You're abiding in faith. You're abiding in trust. You're abiding in knowing that you are made by greatness and for greatness. You know that you're living on purpose with purpose. You're feeling your victory in advance. You're cultivating certainty. You're cultivating confidence. You're cultivating an inner knowing that you're the bomb freaking diggity, not out of arrogance, but confidence. And as you have more confidence, you take more action. As you take more action, guess what? You get more competence. When you get more competence, guess what? You get more of more confidence. And it becomes this beautiful upward spiral of awesome from glory to glory, from good goodness to goodness, from glory to glory, because you're stepping into more and more faith and more and more power and more and more action, getting more and more results, which is giving you more and more certainty and confidence and competence. And that's how you build momentum. But it starts by feeling the victory in advance. Does that make sense, guys? I trust it does. So the third step in this process is just get started. As St. Nike says, just do it. Just do it. Strike while the iron is hot. So that means rather than letting that vibration of victory just fleet away from you. The moment you feel that feeling of victory, when you get your heart connected to what it feels like now that you've accomplished your dream and it's already yours now, how does that feel? How great does that feel? When you feel that energy rising in your spirit, when you feel your soul soaring with the vibration of victory, that's when you want to strike while the iron is hot. That's a sacred moment to take action. Doesn't mean you need to take a big action, just take some action. That might be make a phone call. That might be, you know, whatever that first step is. So ask yourself, what's the first step you can take? Maybe it's calling someone. Maybe it's getting an accountability partner. Maybe it's like, for example, if you wanted to commit to an exercise routine, it might be calling the uh, fitness center and getting yourself a membership, right? Or if you wanted to be consistent in proactive prospecting, it might be calling a friend and say, hey, do you want to be my my accountability partner for my hour of power for prospecting because I keep getting in my own way. I'll hold you accountable. You hold me accountable. But there's something that you do now to get the ball rolling, to overcome the inertia because the law of physics says a object out of motion tends to stay out of motion until it acted upon by an outside force. But once the object gets in motion, it tends to stay in motion until acted upon by an outside force. So we got to get over that inertia of non-movement. Once you get that momentum, man, once Big Mo comes to town, you never want Big Mo to leave, right? Now you got the wind in your sails. Now it's like all of a sudden it's that train. And now all of a sudden you're like an Amtrak train with no brakes and no gears. Ain't nothing going to freaking stop you. That's the power of momentum. We got to get that momentum going by just getting the drive shafts moving. So that's the key is taking action. I can't tell you how many people I talk to who, you know, they wake up in the morning and they have an alarm blasting in their ear, which is not a very pleasant way to awaken to the world to have an alarm blasting, right? You don't want an alarm clock. You want an opportunity clock. You want something that you know, invites you into a beautiful opportunity to live your day and bring the best version of yourself, not an alarm beating your auditory brain cells out, but having an opportunity clock that inspires you to, you know, seize the day. But I'm not here to bash on alarm clocks. I'm here to say when you're getting up in the morning, most people, what do they do? What do they do when that alarm clock goes off? They tend to press the what? The snooze button. There you go. Another proclivity towards procrastination. That is the button from hell as far as I'm concerned. I refuse to press the procrastination button. 
I refuse to press the snooze button. I just decided that I'm going to have two minutes in my two first minutes of my day, my conscious awakening moments to just marinate in gratitude. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my clients. Thank you for all the freedom and opportunity. Thank you for the fact I get I get to live on purpose with purpose. Thank you that I get to help people create breakthroughs. Just marinating in gratitude. What a beautiful way to start the day as opposed to, oh shit, here's another day. I don't want to get up. Morning came too quick. Time to roll over and pre press the snooze button, right? It's like, that's not the way to start the day. The way to start the day is to consciously pray in gratitude. And then after two minutes, you do the countdown. Three, two, one, blast off. And you bounce out of bed and you're ready to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, crush it, and seize the day. That's how champions roll. Strike while the iron is hot. Do the countdown. Three, two, one, blast off. It sounds cheesy, but I kid you not, it works. And it will work for you if you work it. So if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm loving this. I definitely need this. I know I have a proclivity towards procrastination on my business. I tend to work in my business instead of on it. I tend to procrastinate on my, pro my prospecting and lead generation efforts. I tend to take the path of least resistance. Welcome to the club, friends. Welcome to the club. You're in good company. Welcome to being human, right? I'm not alone. You're not alone. We're all in this together. We all feel that current. I call it the current of average that wants to pull us down river. We got to swim against the current because down river, there's a freaking avalanche of water. It's called Niagara Falls. And it's not going to bode well if we allow ourselves to drift with the current. The way of the champion, the way of winning is to swim against that current of average. It always has been. It always will be. Everyone wants to be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why is that? Because it takes something to win. It takes grit. It takes faith. It takes courage. It takes a white hot fire burning desire like we talked about before, where you're more committed to your dream than you are your comfort zone. It takes commitment. It takes knowing in your heart that you're called by greatness and for greatness, that you're not going to fight against the price of success, but you will pay the price and you will pay it willingly. And knowing that you got to be willing to do the things most people aren't willing to do today, so you're going to get the results most people aren't going to get tomorrow. That's the way of the champion. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this like, Dorn, I need some guidance. I need some accountability. I need someone to kick me in the proverbial butt. Give me some tough love. I need someone to speak greatness into me because sometimes I forget Sometimes I get caught up in the muck and mire of the minutia. Sometimes I get caught up in imposter syndrome and feeling inadequate and not enough. Sometimes I get caught up in old habits that die hard, that do not serve me. If that's you and you're ready to take your life and your business to that next level and you're sick and tired of spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall, doing the same old thing, getting the same old results, you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net, you're making 80 basis points or higher and you're ready to create an absolute quantum leap breakthrough in your business, not a just itty bitty little incremental improvement, but we're talking a quantum leap, adding an extra 100,000, 300,000, half a million plus per year to your annual income while working smarter, not harder, not putting in more hours, but getting more from the hours you're already putting in. If that's you, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business and we look at what's working, what's not working, where are you at now? Where you want to be? And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, our goal for you is that you leave this call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun along the way. Does that sound fair enough? If so, and I definitely expect that you would indeed declare it to be fair, then I invite you to take advantage of this breakthrough call by booking the call now. Strike while the iron is hot before life gets in the way. This is your first opportunity coming off a how to kick procrastination in the teeth once and for all podcast episode. Let's start building this muscle. You're going to need decisiveness. You're going to need the habit of striking while the iron is hot to conquer your dreams. So you might as well start now. Start building that muscle. Strike while the iron is hot by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply.
Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, just the way it's, it looks on your screen there. So that's all we got for today, friends. The three steps to liberating yourself from procrastination, purgatory, prison, once and for all, and claiming your power to perform, to produce, and to live your best life are as follows. Step one, know what you want. Know what you want. Know why you want it. Step two, feel the victory in advance. Allow yourself to get connected and animated to the vibration, the frequency of victory now by giving thanks in advance and immersing yourself in the glory of your dream now. And the third step to kicking procrastination in the teeth once and for all is get started and take action now. Strike while the iron is hot. So I trust you got some value from this. Perhaps this is just reminders for you. We often need reminding more than we need educating. So that's cool too. And uh, I trust that at least you're now got a little kick in the ass and nudge towards you stepping into your champion self so you can make your dream a reality. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.